we're going to be looking at principles of spiral footwork and a sampling of object-based training methods for developing agility with that footwork. I want to say up front that in this video I am not giving step-by-step -step instructions on how to do the exercises. That's not the point. The point is to explain the theory and then show examples of playing around with theory and movement. First, looking at the principle of the spiral. Spiral structures are formed by the proliferation of straight and side angles. You can see this principle in the structure of the hand. The action of closing the hand is a continuous addition of straight and side angles, which creates a spiral in the form of a fist. In martial arts, footwork needs to be tactical, meaning it can facilitate maneuvering and the deployment of technique. As we've examined in a previous video, the continuum of technique is point, line, cross, spiral. Point, line technique, striking and making contact. Crossing technique, integrating offense and defense. And spiral technique, throwing and grappling. Spiral leg technique results in actions such as tripping, sweeping, entangling, etc. The human body is made to walk upright. Walking and running are the most basic exercises of the human body. If we define the forward-backward direction as straight, then the left-right direction is side. We can move in that direction by shuffling, and by cross-stepping front and back. Combining straight and side stepping results in turning either to the left or to the right. This is the basis of spiral footwork. Naturally, there are many martial arts systems that use some variation of spiral leg method in their forms and techniques. For example, in the Sanchen Kata of Goju Ryu and other karate styles, you can see the encircling movement and double hooking structure of the legs. The inside-outside turning of the legs is also present in many lineages of Wing Chun. Now, my personal training background is in the art of Bakwa Zhang, so I will be using the basic footwork of that art as a basis to demonstrate various exercises. There are certain ideas that are embedded in the forms of Bakwa, including the idea of continuous stepping and the idea of inside-outside spiral stepping, known in Bakwa as Kobu and Baibu. There are certain limitations that are simply part of the nature of traditional martial arts. Tradition is first and foremost about transmitting form. Without form, there's no identifiable style. As a result, traditional arts have a tendency toward fixation and ritualization of form. While it may not hold true for specific individuals, generally speaking, a traditional martial arts style is, by and large, a performing art. Without a clear understanding of principle and physical law, traditional training has a strong tendency toward fantasy, superstition, and various kinds of fetishized movement. From the perspective of essence of evolution, we go from the base of traditional practice to principle, then apply that to the development of training methods. Once you get the theory, your training methods are only limited by your creativity and your imagination. This kind of practice is not just about application, it's about an approach to training based on the research of possibility. Now, as far as footwork goes, if you want to be able to apply your technique outside of a choreographed situation, you have to be able to apply it while moving. Therefore, you need footwork that is dynamic, adaptable, smooth, and agile. Physical proof method. Before looking at exercises, we're going to look at physical models 
as proof of principle demonstrating the basic movement methods involved in the exercises. First, left-right movement. Here, we use a rope to demonstrate the principle of circulation and vibration resulting from continuous left-right movement. Second, spiral movement. Again, using a piece of rope, this time with the pylon, we see that when the rope contacts the pylon, it wraps around in a spiral formation that can move the pylon. For these exercises, I purposely chose objects that are easily accessible to the average person. Each of the objects is a type of physical line. First, we have intersecting lines that are painted on the ground. Next is a vertical metal pole. Then we have a spread of aluminum cans partially filled with water to give them some weight. And last but not least, one of my favorite toys, the pylon. Note that it's on top of a towel on a wooden floor so it can slide easily.